Uh, hello, my name is Jared Seeds. I'm going to be talking about have you hugged your spunk today? Uh, basically, we'll just be going over some uh, basic uh, tips and tricks of stuff that I've seen. Um, simple, simple things to look for if your slunk is splunk, your splunk is having issues. Um, so I guess first things first, um, something, something forward-looking statements. They're bad. Don't if I make any, don't take them. You know, everything with a grain of salt and all thoughts and opinions in this talk my own. Yada yada. They do not reflect Splunk or my company. So, like I said, what we'll cover just some basic tips and ideas to get started making your Splunk environment a little better. Um, we'll avoid direct troubleshooting steps just because I didn't want to dig into the weeds so much for this talk. I want to be a quick point where you can like look up some issues that you may be having and like try to drill down on your own. Um, these are things that I've seen. I've done Splunk PS, so I've gone to like 20, 30 different customer sites this past year and a half, two years, and these are the most common things I see all the time. So just keep that in mind. Um, but uh, having an unhappy Splunk is absolutely no fun. Um, it makes you sad because you see what Splunk is capable of on you know, different talks and you hear all the cool stuff you do, but when yours is sad and unhappy, it can't do anything and it is the worst feeling. And trust me, I know, I've also been a Splunk admin for several years. <laughs> um, one thing to do that you should start at the beginning, find out like why why was Splunk purchased? Why, was, why did you get it? Why What was its original use case? Are you meeting that or did something, you know, go terribly, terribly long? Either you became too popular, which Splunk does a lot. Um, maybe you're just not, um, you know, putting stuff into your Splunk the way you should. You're just like trying to throw everything you can at it to see what sticks and what doesn't, which isn't always the best, you know, use case. Um, I've seen it, but like sometimes you just got to take a step back and uh, like ask these questions to yourself. First things first, like actually look at your hardware for your Splunk instance because there's been multiple times where people's like, oh yeah, I've got X cores, X RAM, and they actually go into their system and look at the specs and it's not anywhere close to where they thought they were. Either, you know, they didn't get delivered correctly or, you know, cores were actually shut off on the system. I've seen that before. Um, the other thing is like, especially if you're running VMs um, or you're using shared storage, you gotta make sure like your resources are dedicated to your Splunk instance. Um, Cause if it's not, you're, you may be like fighting for resources with other systems that are running on you know the shared hardware ESXi, Hyper-V, all that. Um, who's using your Splunk? Like what's your users? What are they doing? Um, and then the other thing is like, what's getting sent to Splunk? Are you getting nicely formatted logs using like the TAs and stuff? Or are you just having people just like start dumping like any UDP ports that they can and just like throwing as much as they can in Splunk and just use it as a dumping ground to see what sticks and what doesn't? Um, you may wanna like prevent that. Um, but you really need to like try to figure out what's coming in. Um, the other thing is like where your data lives and like where it should. Um, what like do you have your data split up by indexes? What kind of storage are they on SSDs, spinning disk, um, SAN, anything like that? Um, making sure like you're not using like NFS directly for the Splunk systems, um, stuff like that. And um, are you using the Splunk monitoring console because it is an amazing piece and it's built into Splunk. And I can't tell you how many customers have, that I've went to where they've had a running Splunk instance, they don't have the monitoring console set up or they thought they had it set up but it wasn't actually monitoring all their systems, it was just monitoring that one. Um, so I would definitely dig into how to set that up properly. Um, again, basic step, check your uh, internal error logs. Um, I know it sounds crazy um, but a lot of people don't think about looking at like just doing index equals under internal and then error and then seeing all the errors come up. Or again, back to that monitoring console that Splunk has built in, the monitoring console will list out all the error logs that it's seeing in Splunk. And if you've got it set up properly, you can see like, oh, well, I'm having this error and this error. And you can hit your high points and start like digging into like what that error message is. If you need to like look online, look on answers, go to Slack. Um, if you just don't know and find out like why that, why you're getting that error message and then you can start drilling down there. Um, the other thing is make sure like, is your search egg giving the error, is your indexer giving the error, or are your forwarders giving the error? Um, Cause each one, the error message will mean different things for each system. Um, yeah, again, for your internal logs, uh, how does your Splunk system logs actually look? Are you actually keeping them? Or are you just dumping them somewhere? 
I had one customer who was getting rid of their internal logs because they didn't think it was necessary at all. So uh, make sure that doesn't happen to you. Um, and then the other thing is like, yeah, it may be awesome to like monitor all your open ports every 15 seconds in Splunk. Um, but do you really need that additional monitoring or do you have you know, a watchman watching your watch Splunk system? In case something goes wrong with Splunk, you may need some external, something externally watching it. Um, or like, what are you monitoring with your Splunk? Like I said, it sounds awesome to watch your ports every 15 seconds, but that may be unneeded when you're just starting out and you're having other issues. You might want to take a step back and just monitor the basics, like what's your CPU usage, RAM usage, and like what your uh, hard disk speed is and like checking stuff like that. Um, again, <laughs> U-Limits and THP, which people mention over and over again, that's huge. I Probably half my customers don't, like if they're running Linux, they don't have it set up properly, or they claim they did, we did a quick health check in the monitoring console, which again, by the way, that monitoring console, it's awesome. You should really, really use it and have it set up. They failed the checks on the limits. It's because they were using Red Hat 7 and they thought they had limits.com set up and it's actually system D. So really drill into how your system is running and making sure everything's correct. Um, and for THP, which is thread huge pages, making or transparent huge pages, uh, make sure they're actually disabled, do a system reboot and confirm that those settings are locked in place. Um, another basic thing is find out, like when you find out who's using it, give them education. Teach them how to use it, tell them what's right, what's wrong. Um, look into Splunk, Fundamentals 1. I believe it's still free for self-taught, it is. And I, I recommend it to every single customer I can. Um, doing the search tutorial, all that stuff, is just making sure they know what to do. And in that point, making great searches start at the beginning. Like when you guys start up your searching, make sure that you know, use index equals and then where your data lives. This goes back to knowing what your system is, where your data store, all that stuff. And knowing how it's set up and making sure like when you're doing and you know, your search, you're not searching all time. Um, the other thing that really helps with searching is making sure everything is SIM compliance. Um, it's, and if you don't know what SIM compliance is, it's just following the common information model, which is helping like fields match up across data points and data systems. Dig into the documentation on Splunk in this and really read into it because it helps a ton. People that use SIM compliance and make sure their logs are SIM compliant from the beginning have a lot less problems than you know, people that you know, don't. And normally it's because either A, they know what the logs are, they're, they filter it or they're just using standard logs and they're not just throwing anything they possibly can into Splunk and hoping it works. Um, another thing is, I've seen this for a few cases, is one team owns the Splunk system, another team owns the actual systems that send the logs. Uh, most cases it's security that owns the Splunk system and they've got regular admins that are just following, you know, this whatever. Make your donor, data owners care about what they're sending to you. Um, make them feel like they, they're making a difference, either like they are contributing and you like either try to invite them to Splunk so they know that they're helping out and maybe they can utilize the information you're doing. If you can't do that, then you should still try to like make them care about like what the Splunk is. Maybe send them a report if you can. Um, just something to like where they will actually care about what they're sending in the Splunk instead of just sending like whatever garbage they can and then just trying to like utilize whatever they, uh, they want. Um, also, are you watching this talk like you set alerts in Splunk, which is in real time? I'm talking to you, YouTube. If you're watching this in real time, congrats. But if you're setting your alerts this way, shame on you. You should, <laughs> you should really look into like either doing like scheduled searching of like either maybe even like a minute to like really find out and find out how fast people are actually like hammering on your alerts. How quickly do you expect people to respond? Real time sounds great and it's great to like tell your boss you're doing real time. But does your boss really know if you're doing like a minute in between each scheduled search and alerting off that, or if you're doing 20 minutes or 30 minutes, um, or maybe they don't even care as long as it's done during that shift. Find out and like, you may want to tune some of the searches you have scheduled that way. Um, the other thing is um, <laughs> to see who is actually doing your scheduled searches. If you have a bunch of people that's running like 20, 30 scheduled searches and they're all doing it like every five minutes, um, take take a look back and like 
do you really need to do it every five minutes or can we like put these out where like one's on like the top of the hour then like a minute later the next five minute one search run next five minute search run the other thing is making sure like if you're running a search every five minutes make sure you're not searching like the past you know two months for data points that you only run every five minutes because that doesn't make sense why are you running a search if for five minutes if you're just searching the past two months um, and it chews up processing time and like I said, I hate to see it. I see it at a lot of different sites where they're like, oh, yeah, we're searching every five minutes or 15 minutes, and we're searching like the past year or past several months. Um, there's there's no reason to. Um, start looking to like lookup tables and like maybe building a lookup table if you're doing searches like that and have them utilize a lookup table instead of like pulling a search and just like refreshing your data all the time. Um, the other thing, and I mentioned this, like, do you really need those logs? If you talk to Splunk and your Splunk, you know, representative, the answer is yes. You need to send every single log you own into Splunk. But take a step back and learn exactly what logs you can do today. And then that way you can log more tomorrow. So figuring out, again, prioritize like what you're trying to send to Splunk, what your use case is, and like what you're trying to fix. Remember, this is, this is like, if you're already having issues, you might want to take a step back, pull back, find out what's wrong. You may have a terabyte license and you think you can take everything in, but like, you're just, you're, you're not hitting anything. You're just, your Splunk is just unhappy. Maybe it's a hardware limitation. Maybe you're just dumping too much garbage. Got to figure it out. And then once you do, you can u fully utilize your log um, that you've already bought, or your license, I should say. Um, this, is, this isn't as common, but I've seen it on a lot. Just look into syslog collectors um, and then pick your favorite and then like any sports team, say how yours is superior to whatever your, uh, you know, people around you have chosen. Um, big ones for Linux is like syslog ng and our syslog. Um, Windows, I've, I've, Kiwi I think is the only one I've heard of. <laughs> is there another one? Kiwi's Not, the one. Kiwi's the one, <laughs> so <laughs> you have your team if you're on Windows. <laughs> <laughs> and there are a few of you. Um, but if you can, utilize, uh, look into like trying to do Linux um, with that. But this will help uh, so your Splunk systems aren't just like with open ports with UDP getting standard syslog. Um, go read some blog posts about this. There's a lot of good ones. Uh, I think George Starcher has a really good blog post on syslog. Read that and you'll be like, oh, so this is why I should do it. Um, definitely utilize that. Um, Oh, who am I? Uh, oh, my name is Jared Seats. I work for Defense Point Security. I do Splunk PS stuff for a little bit. I did Splunk Administrator. Wait, this slide seems kind of out of place. Oh, speaking of out of place, are your timestamps correct? Um, because timestamps are really, really important. And I'm going to say this again. Timestamps are really, really important, guys. 100%. A ton of these errors that I've seen that are like in the thousands, hundred thousands, the timestamps are wrong. Also time zones. Time zones are also equally important. And also NTP. Having NTP on your servers is critical. I did have one client where they didn't have NTP set up and their servers were like, half their servers were like four hours in the future, a few were three hours back. It was a mess. And like when your Splunk systems are not synced correctly, it's even worse because like your Splunk systems, especially if you're using SSL, spoiler alert, it will start complaining very heavily. <laughs> um, speaking of uh, timestamps, uh, this is a nice XKCD comic, which uh, is mandatory in every presentation. So uh, now that I've hit that quota, um, and you now know about good timestamps, uh, you can have a happier Splunk. Um, but if you're still stumped, you watch this talk, you're like, man, it just didn't dig in. Like, check out Splunk Answers. A lot of good questions have been asked. If you don't see your question specifically, and I mean you should search and look first because there's a lot of answers. There's a lot of questions that have already been answered and it's the exact same. Even if it looks old, I mean Splunk's changed a lot, so some of it's irrelevant, but a lot of it's not because it goes back to the basics. Um, and also, even if you don't have a question and you want to join the Splunk community, you should join Slack, Splunk Slack. Um, it's awesome. Definitely do it. I mean, it's the reason why I'm here today. Um, and they've helped out a ton. Um, quick wrap up, um, just like know your Splunk system, figure out what is going into it, um, find out who's using it, um, and then like, again, I'll say it again, double check your hardware of your Splunk systems, make sure it's exactly what you think it is. Um, dig into your Splunk logs, 
find out why your spunk could be sad, fully utilize the monitoring console and use the health check properly. Did I mention the monitoring console? It's a great piece of technology that's in this system and it helps a ton. Um, every customer that I've helped set it up says they've definitely utilized it because like they can see their system, they can see, they can prove like A, Splunk's saying there's nothing wrong or yes, something is wrong and this is where I need to drill down and start troubleshooting. Um, stay on top of best practices for Splunk. They change, you know, occasionally. Um, and then ask your new friends in Slack and answers with tips to use, dig into, like that you can make your Splunk even better and happier. Any questions? Nope, so uh, thank you and uh, hope you have a happy Splunk.